we are looking for a strong council and therefore the members here are uh, you know standing for that elections and looking for your support as we do that you know iei there are other professional institute like ieee where i am also chair for communication society and we need to forge some relationships and this homegrown institute which has this legacy we are talking today about atmanirbhar bharat a strong resilient india for which engineering is very very vital and with 15 plus divisions inside this it is a great platform and we must take um, and leverage in all possible sense with that note on the front of this business process automation of iis operations few uh, weeks back we talked about you know it ot 5g and iot how we can converge these technologies so i was along with electronics uh, divisions other uh, candidates we had this discussions about convergence of technology and today we are here with electrical department electronics and telecom and computer science because we believe these fields are together and they are bringing convergence of technology in terms of control communications and computer so coming down to the next level of things that we all together can look into operational aspect can look into student aspect can look into international aspects first of all an operational side as the judge was mentioning uh do you know the membership benefits now how does a potential new member search about iei that what they are doing how the information they are not yet member how do i induct these new members this itself is a topic on its own and the way we build different products and services in samsung and flipkart and amazon because the product discovery is cool. very vital so how would the new members discover is a topic how do you then once somebody has expressed interest to be onboarded what is that onboarding process how does one member upgrade can they get a trigger automatically when you do that that you have been five years into this and you have certain experience when i put the profile possibly there is a way to suggest that you can look for an upgrade and then this kind of election which is online uh, that we have to make it much more authentic systems just doing online is not enough the security has to be embedded into the process so there is an operational side now if i talk about amie and one is to conduct the you know we did an webinar also on um, how to improve this amie and the recognitions that used to be there what should we be doing it but today we are talking about uh, you know the the ict deployment there are many software bots that have come up they could help in preparation of examinations for example if you are studying it could help you assess where is your weakness if you take a a uh, test sample paper you know not only you have taken a sample paper online but it could also tell you that this side of it you are not studied because it's very easy to see you know where is the weakness so the sample questions to practice to resolve it can help in guiding and automating help in the queries not only that once you get the certificate one of the benefit of this digital process is not just what we are building for ourselves not just the exam part once you get the certificate you know today government is talking about digi locker right there are many such platform like aadhar like upi the digi locker is a very very important platform where you can store things so even these certificates that we will be having it can be widely deployed today you are working here tomorrow you might be in kuwait or in another country such things uh, would be very very helpful into that so uh, how do you do this enablement into the remote processing then i come to the webinar you know we have been doing now everybody is doing this webinars the idea is not just you listen one way but this video recording of a sessions could be 
put it onto the portals, could be video booklets. The idea is from one-way communications, IEI, we, can we bring two-way communications? We have top-down messages, but also the surveys, the expressions of the people that needs to be folded it in the inside of, of the organization. And the financial transparency, what Dheeraj mentioned, you know, this is very, very important. The pilferage that happens, uh, we need to bring a transparency so that people see how their money is, their money as well as other sponsorship monies, government funding that is coming, uh, that is being spent. Books can easily be audited. Government then give recognitions. If there is a doubt in the organizations, then things fall into a different uh, league. So therefore, financial transparency is very, very vital and all kinds of software that are available can be used. And today, I must say also one more thing. I have seen startups, I work with them, and they build software. For example, one company that we've been working, they are building micro skills. As employees have HR issues or IT issues, instead of going, there are FAQs and it can provide that right time, right skills. If I'm stuck in some drawing, it will throw. It knows that you are struggling with that and therefore, it can prompt you to get that sorted. So there are many such tools that are coming on software bots and skills development, and I'm sure we could use many of them uh, for operational purpose, for educational professional purpose, and for financial transparency of the organization. And I will conclude by saying, not just in the country, um, you know, there are other institutes like I was, mentioning about IEEE Bangalore sections, communication society that I chair, and international collaborations. Um, IEEE used to acknowledge IEI earlier. It still recognizes IET and gives some membership benefits to IET, but I think IEI, we do not have it. And so similarly, we need to bring it for this connect with global and uh, many other associations, INAE, that was built by IEI, but today we do not have that benefit. IEI is in headquartered in Calcutta, but probably IIT Kharagpur linkage is also weaker. So we have to reinstate those, and that's our dream, that's our vision, and all of the people in the panel would like to work. So I would, uh, this is uh, myself, for myself, as well as for all the people in ECS, ET that are here, we would like uh, to get your support and the vote so that we can take our thoughts forward. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Over to Dheeraj. Dheeraj, are you there? You are muted, it seems. Kumar, may please. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I got muted. Yeah, no issue. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, so, thank you so much, Alumna Day, sir, for giving a beautiful. Uh, what you call light, uh, what you call eye opening speech to all of the participants. Thank you so much. So now I'd request uh, our speaker. Uh, so, one second, sir. There's some technical problem. Just be on me, be, be with me. Just one second. Yeah, I would request uh, uh, Sri Akhilesh Kumar Janji, who is the former managing director of the Rajasthan Electronics and Instruments Limited uh, and served more than two decades in various sectors in the field of information technology and executed many projects in his capacity. So I would request Mr. Akhilesh Kumar Jain, please go ahead with your, what you call today's speech. Thank you so much. Hi, good evening, friends. Uh, let me first thank uh, the rebuilding uh, the team built by Anil Ji, Dheera Ji, and many more. And uh, the way they are seeing dream, the way they are dreaming uh, 
IEI, I think that's a critical lead of the hour today. Uh, if we see uh, the country as a whole, this is the right time, the right stage where we can, we need to build, uh, rebuild IEI. Uh, otherwise, we lose so many things. Uh, we all know that, uh, yeah, we are going. I think there is some network issue from uh, Achilles Kumar Jain, sir. Just wait for seconds. He may yeah, be yeah, ready. we have to wait for seconds. Yeah, it's okay now. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, just wait. Yeah, so there was a disruption in the supply. So that's the reason. Yeah, no problem. Please go ahead. Uh, I have connected to my mobile. So, friends, uh, we all know that uh, there's a uh, mission by Honorable Prime Minister Atmeva Bharat. Make in India is there. Solar mission is there. Skill India mission is there. Employable India mission is there. And there's things like PLI scheme. Uh, we are dreaming that uh, uh, to, to become the largest in solar power production in the world uh, with the concept of one sun, one grid, one world. Uh, coupled with this, we are also moving forward to the clean and green economy where we have, uh, the country is uh, uh, trying to build the electric mobility uh, in a leadership role and India can emerge not only uh, the manufacturer of electric uh, vehicles, but the largest user of electric vehicles in the globe. So all the challenges, if we see the power side, because I, I come from the power and IT and the rural India and the digital India. So I see a lot many challenges in terms of the employable youth, the re-employable, uh, uh, the older ones. So these two challenges, if in true sense, if I see, IEI is the only organization which can address these issues. And you know, there are many ways to do that. I have come across IEI on two occasions uh, when I was awarded at the state level and when our organization was awarded at the central level. So the way I have experienced IEI in last 10 years, I'm, I can confidently say it's way before it's not something, you know, very small. It's way before and a lot is to be done. And I have just worked out 10 points where I think everything would be covered because my friend Alok Nath has already addressed many issues. The first suggestion which I would like to, uh, to, uh, to take it on when we are on the board to improve the performance and accountability of IAI. And we need to take measures to reduce all wasteful expenditure. We need to also uh, take part in the role of government wherever needed in terms of uh, having our members in the committee, giving our advice at the right time, uh, at the right place so that we do not miss any opportunity. The second point, which I see very, very relevant, we need to bring a corporate culture in functioning of uh, IEI, uh, not only at the headquarter, but at the regional level or even at the district or even at the smallest level. So that the delivery of services from the headquarter can be improved uh, to the general level, to the district level, even to our all the members where they are coming for the skilling or uh, their uh, services are being used by us. The third important thing is we need to relook at our HRM policies, human resource management at IEI, which is very, very critical uh, because now the HRM has become very important and very critical for any organization. Until unless we don't do that, we will not be in position to redesign the courses. Uh, we will not be in position 
to offer such courses including many uh, types of internships which would be needed right from student level to the leadership level fourth which i see uh, very very relevant because india is marching ahead uh, with the best of whatever is available uh, in the globe uh, we would have many export opportunities so we need to increase our member industry to create those uh, capability uh, which can uh, reduce the import uh, uh, import of the for the country for different uh, engineering goods so that at a later stage when we build such capacity we can in contribute to the export so that's the responsibility in my opinion of uh, iei uh, that can be a biggest contribution to the member industry the fifth one which i see that we need to follow the best practices not only at iei rather we should uh, motivate our member organizations our institutional member to follow the best practices and to demonstrate those practices to their subsidiary units or wherever uh, they, those units are functioning six point i would also like to touch upon the corporate social responsibility i know this issue is not directly connected to us but if we see are all the industry members they are contributing a lot through csr so why there cannot be a common agenda which we can align with the pm uh, with the with the country agenda and iei can pursue the csr objective also with the member uh, institutions seventh point i would like to emphasize upon that there is a huge need critical need of technology upgradation at iei and this technology upgradation should be demonstrated to their member institutions and to their members because ultimately we have to promote digital india digital india cannot be promoted until unless we upgrade our technology be until unless we do not upgrade our infrastructure we all know that we are in a culture of innovation these days and india is uh, has a huge speed to innovate to undertake r&d projects recently i have just uh, heard that uh, csi uh, csir is setting up a semiconductor laboratory in rajasthan so these kind of innovations are happening so these opportunities uh, should be taken forward by e iei through its member institutions uh, the role uh, of iei uh, should also be aligned with flagship programs such as startup india and make in india and i think this is a critical need we should join hand with uh, and set up some incubation cell in iei and ensure that how they function how they achieve their objective and how our member industries gets benefit through this startup india and make in india ninth suggestion i would like to give that there should be a common and shared r&d facility amongst the member industries we have huge industry base across the country who are member of iei so why can't we have a common and shared r&d facilities which can be used not only by other industries that can also be used by our members that can also be used by our students to um, uh, practice their innovation and to take the innovation uh, for, for the future needs uh friends we all know that uh, 75th year of independence is landing at 2022 so that's why this year for iei is very very critical and whatever country is thinking whatever we all citizens are thinking whatever we all engineers are dreaming let's take and make a new beginning in year 2022 when this new body is there uh, to to build a plan which revamp uh, the entire iei with a totally new face with a completely digital face with total transparency total traceability and help our member industries help our member students and ensure 
the quality education which can really help themselves which helps industry and which helps country as a whole and iei should should get its glory which it used to have when it was formed and in uh, certain years they did excellent work so thank you for the opportunity provided uh, to me to interact with the the uh, 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 the, the, the audience today who serve us here and thank you for for all the panelists who have listened to me patiently thank you thank you so much sir as rightly said by our akilesh kumar jain sahab that the r and d facility the research and development facility uh, should come up uh, with the initiative from the iei so that our stakeholders like the corporate members students can you know do a kind of a research kind of a thing for the innovations which they come into place uh, and that would serve a, a kind of a platform through which it can go in a different level so that is very well said as by uh, by the r and d facility so so now i request now i request uh, our next expert who is in the industry for more than uh, two to three decades uh, Sri Ram Chandra Chakravarti he is the managing director uh, of PSI Metals India Private Limited because his company has also done a lot of implemented business automation in his within his company and also in many other fields. So I would request uh, Sri Chakravarti to just give his brief to in the favor of all our participants. Thank you so much. And um, thank you, Dheeraj. And from my side, uh, thank you and most uh, hearty welcome to all the participants. Uh, I see there is a huge potential for Institute of Engineers. I think all of you can see that. But only thing is we have to um, achieve that under the leadership of Dr. Anil Kumar, who has initiated uh, this movement of rebuilding IEI. And we like-minded people are um, holding his hands that all of us together will be a great success. And in future, we will reestablish our beloved IEI to its pristine glory. According to me, you know, any organization uh, has to run through various processes. And these various processes, how we implement it and how we linked one process with the other gives the result, the outcome. When we have seen the, out, the process as an outcome, uh, currently, what we are uh, having with IEI is not satisfactory at all. So we want to uh, take it further by introducing um, uh, process automation. And process automation, um, of course, is a very common term in process industry parlance, like steel plant, power plant, or chemical, petrochemical, oil refinery, pulp, paper, cement, everywhere. But Institute of Engineers is not an industry, but the institute of um, uh, more than 100 years in, uh, um, survival. So what we want to do is we want to introduce some processes like we want to set up uh, some link with the national international lead academic institutes where you all know there's NPTEL which is I mean funded by MHRD government of India and supported by seven IITs and in Institute of Science Bangalore. These are a repository of knowledge and we can have an establish a link with IEI. Our students, our researchers, our academicians, they can be immensely benefited by this um, joining our hands with NPTEL. We, have, we can join our hands with institutes like IEEE, where Dr. Aloknath they has said he is a, the chair of the communication sale. Uh, we, I am the uh, president of ISA Kolkata section, which International Society of Automation based in USA, who also have a certified training program of international standards, and like certified automation professional or certification in cyber security and various industry standards and automation standards. IEI can join hands with the I Institute like IEEE or ISA to offer these courses at a subsidized rate now to our students community in our, or our academic community who are interested to undergo such training. So this way we can really benefit our students in a much greater way which individually may not be possible for them, but the, as an institute like IEI, it is very much possible uh, to tie up with like-minded institutes and offer the same benefits 
to our members, to our students' members specifically, and to our researchers. And then, uh, of course, uh, no institute can survive without integrity. And then I think is very much lacking as of today, the integrity in IEI. So that's why some of the people are thinking that, um, I mean, things are not going in the right direction and we have to do something for it. And uh, that's why you have come together and we need your support, all the members of the um, eminent members of the Institute of Engineers, please support us, support the cause which we are expounding uh, so that we can run the Institute uh, the much better way. And uh, uh, financial integrity is one of the top most integrity where you know, which, ha which has been compromised in the past in our institute, which should not have been happened, but we have to see that in future, such things never happens again. And, you know, basically justice, not only to be delivered, but also to be seen like that, the integrity, we cannot tell the people, oh, yeah, we are following the integrity, honesty, sincerity, and putting our hard work, but it has to be seen by the members, by the people at large. So by the, we have 15 engineering disciplines where we can get a multidisciplinary institute like IEI, where you can be a life member only spending a 10 to 12,000 rupees. Even if, I mean, nearest club, <laughs> Calcutta club, you become to me, you few lakhs of rupees. And not only that, even if you have few lakhs of rupees, they will not give you, offer you membership because you have to have some social standing. But an institute like IEI offers membership to any engineers anywhere in the world. So that way it is not, I mean, is, I mean one of the best institute to be a member of, to be proud of. And then what we want to see is we have to have some proactive approach with the I mean, government of India, our state government, or the local government, wherever our centers are there. Or even in international um, uh, cases also, we have centers outside India also, where we can I mean, give or extend our support or services to the cause for the society at large. That will place IEI in the heart of people. And that way, as Mr. Day has proposed that we need to um, um, bring new members, student members so passing out from the university or something like that. They don't um, come to institute engineers on their own. So if the institute um, takes itself in such a um, level that is visible from um, all over the country, then people will be definitely interested. And they will come, everybody wants that, what I will get if I become a member IEI. So, but when we can show them that the benefits they will be getting from IEI, they'll automatically come. So that way we can serve another purpose. And another thing is we, I have seen in IEI news, there are so many research projects pub, gets published. So we have industry members. We have, as um, Professor Jain has suggested that, Mr. Jain has suggested that we can have research and development work. So our research scholars, our students can benefit from the industry academia collaboration uh, so, so that they can also um, take their um, research work to a higher level. With this, my best wishes to all the participants and uh, all the panelists. And I once again request our eminent members to support us for a greater cause to reestablish IEI in its distinct glory. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful speech to all of our participants. And I hope your idea and uh, your interest for the IEI would definitely take IEI to a different level. So before uh, introducing our next speaker, I would just like to give a brief about the, the founder of this rebuilding IEI movement, none other than Dr. Anil Kumar. And I am giving a round of applause from all, all, all of us to you, sir. So I, I'll give a brief introduction. Dr. Anil Kumar is presently the state project administrator of state project implementation unit in Uttar Pradesh for implementation of the TECU, that is called Technical Education Quality Improvement Program, three projects under the Ministry of Education, Government of India. This is a whole bank project on technical education. And he's working for addressing the issue of quality, accreditation, autonomy, excellence, research and innovation, collaborative research, equity, skill development, employability, ICT integration, future skills, and many more. Our Dr. Anil Kumar has three master's degree. He's a PhD in environment with a master's degree from IIT Roorkee. He's a master, MSc in disaster mitigation and master of ecology and environment. He's also a gold medalist at the bachelor's in engineering level. 
In his 36 years of experience in technical education management at national level, top level general and academy administration, examination education and accreditation, research and innovation, he has been closely working with International Energy Engineering Alliance and also was secretary of Indian Register of International Professional Engineers, dealing with the various engineering divisions at national level and part of the Indian Engineering Con Congress of the Institution of Engineers for seven years. He has also been closely associated with the publication of the technical journal, which is one of the most important journal of the Institution of Engineers India. He is a recipient of the Certificate of Merit by UNESCO and Charhan Ratna Sarman, Vikas Mitra, and many more awards. He has also worked as UNESCO Fellow at IIT Gurki. He is a Superintendent Engineer in Damodar Valley Corporation. He was a Deputy Director General in Institution of Engineers, Deputy Director in AICT, and also he was Secretary and Director in charge for quite some time in the Institution of Engineers. He has been environmental activist and worked extensively for water conservation in Jharkhand, and he's also a social activist and as well as, and, and is very alert to the issues of Indian culture and national security. So this is a brief introduction about Dr. Nil Kumar. So I request sir to just share your few experiences and words and how we can go ahead with the automation of the institution of engineers to take it, take it to a different transparent uh, administration of the organization. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Dhirad. Uh, it is not a brief introduction. You have gone into much detail. Uh, anyway, uh, let me come to the uh, come to the point and be very focused. I am not from electrical, electronics, and computer domain to talk about the technicality of the business process of automation. But I have been a core administrator, system administrator all through either an engineering organization or in institution of engineers or in Ministry of Education. And while working at institution of engineers for more than seven years, I realized what are the weaknesses and what are the strengths. So weaknesses are the basis for forcing us to move forward for business transfer, uh, business process automation before going to share little detail about it, I'll not take more than three, four minutes, but I will share with you why this rebuilding II, Samrit Kumar had already talked about it, but I will also take one minute time to share with you, rebuilding II is an initiative to rebuild Institution of Engineers India, to bring it in its old status, the old glory of II, largely respected across the country, and among the a various ministries at the center at the state had lost its potential, lost its glory, lost its access. What to talk about the central ministry, even with the state government as well. The reason is very simple. II had lost its direction. And why IA had lost its direction? IA lost direction because of, because of the leadership, which is not having competency enough to take forward II to a greater height. What to talk about to, to take it to the greater height, to maintain at least at a level at which it was. It was. Friends, because of that only, large number of intellectuals from across the country came together and they thought, unless good people do not go to the council, unless people from industry, people from the research, people from academics, all holding very high positions and having vision, if they will go to the council, they can probably steer II to move forward with sufficient vision as well as commitment. And this can come only when the people who are part of the rebuilding II, their names and details are available on the rebuilding II website. And today, those who are present over here, they belong to various disciplines, like Professor Srinivas Singh, he is contesting from electrical division. Akhilesh Kumar Jain, sir, he is contesting from electrical division. Ram, uh, Ram Chan Chakwarti, sir, he is contesting from electronic division. Alok Nath Day, sir, he is contesting from electronic division. Mr. Dhirat Bhatt Pujari, who is conducting this webinar, he is contesting from computer science and engineering division. And myself contesting from, from environmental division. 
so friends now coming to the business process automation business process automation can help improve accountability transparency and enable accurate data recording which can be accessed by relevant stakeholders whenever necessary it will also retain all process related communication within the workflow to make execution easier and faster there are certain issues which forces the organizations or institutions to go for bpa number 1 bpa facilitates digital transformation bpa creates clarity and ensures transparency there is clarity there is clarity clarity about the roles and responsibility clarity about the decision making process and full transparency of actions and decisions bpa streamlines work processes there are various work processes which may be very cumbersome through implementation it can become very easier and faster and efficient bpa allows for better adherence to compliance and industry standards it standardizes operations it yields better customer satisfaction and by ensuring customer satisfaction you are enhancing the efficiency level of the organization so why all these things are definitely missing in institution of business in india i as a deputy director general for 7 years and as a sdg in charge for long 7 8 months at, during various durations has came to re realize that functioning of ii is, is, is in total disarray there is no transparency in actions no transparency in decisions <coughs> there is no compliance of financial rules i am not criticizing issues of engineers i am simply telling the violators the rulers who are ruling the iie and they are damaging iie by non compliance of the existing rules either it is a financial rules or administrative rules in many cases there has been no control over the fund we came to know recently that there has been a violation by the highest authority of the iie in the foreign visits because they have crossed the limit of the fund limit which was been ensured by the financial rules there is no transparency in fund management go to the site of institute of engineers india it is the largest professional body it is well recognized across the country and across the globe but you will not come to know any financial details on the website why is it a private property is it a private company belonging to few individuals no it is a public institution and public has the right to know everything in a transparent manner to be posted displayed and communicated to the customers to the members and to the community and to the nation as well recent past a story of 35 crore siphoning it may be news for for many of you 35 crore rupees has been siphoned by iia it is only because of there was no business process automation in the system and how it has been transferred siphoned nobody knows many violation of financial rules over expenditures over expenditure on council council meetings this puts a question mark over the public institution which is accountable to the people but public does not know what is going on inside and who is manipulating whether any action is been taken against them whether preventive and corrective measures have been integrated in the system to my mind and to my to the best of my knowledge no nothing like that all such situation has forced rebuilding ii team to pursue the business process automation and i assure all the participants and esteem member of the organization that if our team in good number go to the council the first and foremost requirement will be the business process automation of the whole of the institution so that transparency can be ensured efficiency can be can be increased and we can become more accountable to the community to the public and to the government as well with this few words i like to end it over here with a firm commitment about the of the rebuilding ii that we will be doing everything with the sole sole motive 
of restoring the past glory of II and nothing beyond that and nothing more than that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I did not have to say anything more already. Whatever needs to be said, you have said everything to the participants. So now, sir, uh, we are going to start the panel discussion since uh, uh, one of our speaker, because of some reasons, he was unable to be there in the meeting. Uh, so uh, now uh, I would request uh, uh, the panel. We have, our panelists for today are Professor uh, Srinivas Singh, uh, Professor N. Kumarappan, uh, Professor Arvind Chaube, myself being a moderator, Mr. Amitabha Kavasi, and Mr. Suman Mukherjee. So uh, I would request uh, Professor Srinivas Singh to lead the entire panel discussion. But prior to that, before uh, Professor Srinivas Singh says something, yeah. I want to say something about him. Uh, for thank the, you very much. And, uh, for, for, for the participants. Uh, and, I have heard all the speakers. And yeah. then really, uh, they are giving, uh, no doubt, a very innovative idea. And uh, all the people are converging at the same time, uh, same point that how we can make this EI in the new shape and forms and restructuring so that it can be vibrant, which was expected long bank due to those various issues, it is coming here. The topic of the panel, as all we know, it is basically the business automation for the uh, you know, rebuilding EI is focusing for the transparency. Now the transparency is a word. It is a very, very wide transparency from, you can say from 1% to 100%. So always we say transparency is good and we should have. Now it is the age of RTI, is the age of the, uh, where the public demand and the perceptions which is required, but the transparency should not be higher also because that will lead to the, as we all know, the transparency is good, but the nudity is not good. So as we know that we should give the transparency that minimizes many, many RTIs because it's land of law. And also the expectation, those are the members, they have paid the fees, they are expecting. So they can also know what is going on at the various platform. And for that, automation is must. If automation is there, we can, we can minimize the cost. Already this is a new business model is required nowadays. We are having, no doubt I'm not saying EI is not using the tools, but it is really, we have to see how it can be the cost cutting. And all these ones cost cutting, it should be trans not transferred. It should be put somewhere those money, especially for the, I can say the humanitarian activities. Just you see, if there is something calamities, like it happened in Kerala, it happens in uh, uh, Orisha, it happens in the various other places as well. So in that, how much this EI can come forward so that this is also a branding. I know this IEEE in Kerala just put a lot of money. If we are there, I'm not saying we couldn't put that money. It depends upon our budget, et cetera. But our, the volunteers, even though we can say IEI people are helping this. So humanitarian activity is also, we have to go for that and we have to change the perception. And the perception will only change because the EI will see, ask people say EI. So perception will be only there if we can connect the people. And for the connecting, we can start many, many things. I say, we can have a regular newsletters every two months or one month. And it is a very crisp. It is not a big detail. Remaining, you can go to there. And nowadays, you know, the e electronics media is there. We can send the emails to all the people by the some four, five, six pages. What are the activity? Earlier, they were publishing. But right now, it is not coming regularly, even the newsletters. That we should know what the EI is doing. Various state centers, our local centers are excellent. I know many, but many are in the dormant, only sitting and eating and finally meeting and going. So that's, we have to connect, we have to brainstorm, we have to bring it. So a complete structural change is required at this age. I can say, then only we will be there. And we have to be very, very, I can say always, I'm very uh, supportive that we should go for uh, the very massive changes, but again, slow pace. It is not as, uh, you know, suddenly it's just breaking all the barriers. So slow pace, we have to go far. That will be basically, it is there. And also I can say, we can have a some my office from the Calcutta, we should have some, uh, already we are having EI center in uh, Delhi. We have to have somebody sitting so that we can have the good connection with the ministries. Because if you are not in Delhi, you are sitting in the Calcutta, 
going and coming back one day and flight, the huge cost is there. So we can have some director level, uh, some certain level people that he can have uh, some licensing officer in Delhi. And already we are having the EI building where then we can create some offices for that so that some of the parts people can easily approach also. They can go to the offices because going to Calcutta is very, very difficult. No doubt nowadays phone we can talk, but many a times it is required to reach that place. So I can say this is a, a good way, this rebuilding, if it is coming forward, I'm sure this EIE will start gaining its uh, momentum and I'm sure it will be very, very good. So uh, we can other, I can listen to other people. So thank you, thank you very much. And I can, I, I wish this other can also share their views. Thank you. Pujari ji. Thank you so much, sir. So I would like to just give a brief about our Sridivas sir, uh, who has been given a very beautiful insight. So Dr. Srinivas Singh, he's a professor of higher academic grade in the Department of Electrical Engineering in the IIT Kanpur. He's a recipient of many uh, awards, including IEEE IAS Outstanding Educator Mentor Award 2021, IEEE India Council Limited Past Chair, and NPSC 2020 Academic Excellence Award, IEEE IAS Distinguished Lecturer in 2019-21, and also IEEE PES Distinguished Lecturer from 2019. He has, in, uh, he has a publication of more than 40, uh, 500 what he called books and uh, what he called journals in where he have done publications. He's a professional member for various what he called uh, institutions, including Institution of Engineers, Indian National Academy of en Engineering, the Institution of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers, Alexander von Humboldt, which is a Germany-based uh, institution. He's a life member of the Indian Society of the Continuing Education Engineering. He's a life member of the Central Board of Education and Power India. During his uh, a long career of more than three decades, he had served with various institutions. Worth mentioning, uh, he was a research fellow when he, uh, in the early days in the Hong Kong Polytechnic University in a full-time position. He was also uh, assistant professor in the assistant uh, Asian Institute of Technology, which is in Bangkok, Thailand. He was a visiting professor. He's a visiting professor uh, in, in uh, what he called DTU Technical University of Denmark. And presently he has been ser uh, serving more than two decades in the Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, as a professor. So thank you so much, sir, for your, uh, uh, your introduction and your uh, uh, inputs on how we should go ahead for automating the institution of IEA for transparent and vibrant IEA. Thank you so much. So now we have with us our next speaker, who is a professor of the Andamalai University, Dr. Kumar Pan, and he is a he is in the electrical and electronics engineering and had served more than uh, two decades, more than two decades with various publications, uh, both in the research as well as in the uh, various other, what you call public as private sector, this thing. So I request Dr. Kumar Pan to please address accordingly. Thank you so much. Re rebuilding the leader, uh, Dr. Anil Ji, Mr. Anil Ji, and Mr. J. Rich. They are the backbone of this rebuilding group. Uh, once they started, uh, till till the end of that, what really want to they achieve? We are going on in such a proper direction. We are really happy to join with them to attain such a goals. But I maybe acted as sometime as a mentor, particularly the alumni of Institution of Engineers. I really have very good experience with Institution of Engineers. That to now we are in a position to revive the AMI engineering examination because it is a very one of the very important examination in golden days and through that number of them were benefited for example once those who join in the military at that time now they always say ami equal to be not be equal to ami such a way initially started it is really a great opportunity for those who working in military that to your remote places as well as 
those uh, having a diploma, once they do their job parallelly, they can write this exam uh, to become an engineer. For that, it may be a very helpful one. And they have a part A and part B exam, as well as uh, a part section A and section B exam. And it went on well for a number of years. And that to those who become an alumni, they are really doing a wonderful work throughout the world. Now, after some time, due to some of the reasons, now it is stopped. Now we are in a position to revive, uh, uh, revive the AMA examination. Once we revive the AMA examination, when it is to be get successful, it is already issues are in the level of a court. But once we choose such a level to again conduct the AMA examination, no doubt about it. We have to follow the AACT models. Uh, they give around 160 credit, the credit system to be followed, as well as it's one of the professional kind of a degree. The practical examination already the AMA they're conducting, but that is further, it is to be improved. So nearer to the colleges located, nearer to the AMA local centers, there we have to provide a practical facility to them. And uh, not only making a 160 credit together with the a practical examination, finally they have to do some project. But the projects are socially reachable because our alumni are very strong alumni, not only that, our members are also very strong. Though through them, we can get some socially reachable project and act all the members as a mentors to them and get a good project through them, then for they become a very good professions. We march again with the same, comparing with AACT kind of, kind of a curriculum, those you're following throughout the India by all the engineering college, similar kind of a way we also follow in institution of engineers. Therefore, it's very easy for us to revive and make equivalent to them and compete with other engineering colleges and continuously maintain this AMA examination for a long time. The very important opportunity through that, I'm again insisting, like those who are there in the remote places like military. And not only that, those who are, have a diploma holders, they are really struggling to complete the engineering. For them, it is a great opportunity. And apart from that, now we are marching again to, uh, based on the dual degree courses. We are marching again for multidisciplinary approaches. In such a way, those who are completed, we, they can even parallelly do any kind of a branch, branch like Institution of Engineers doing an MA course. Uh, completing the examination that is also possible now uh, these are all essential nowadays to become a multidisciplinary people as well as uh, doing a dual degree and that way this AMA again it may be a very great help as an academician i have touched a number of points related to that beyond all this we have to do a number of innovative activities already uh, since things are told they don't have a proper kind of a newsletters and for example, in our IEEE, we are following continuously each and every section, uh, releasing the newsletter for every month through them. What is exactly happening on the respective section, all what is happening throughout India, we know them very clear. We were now long back, that kind of a way it is done in the institution of engineers also. Now, the recently, it does not happen in such a way. That is to be again to be changed. And what is happening in institution of engineers that is to be carried over through to all the people throw to all the people. And not only that, once you carry it out in such a way, we can easily reach all of us. And again, the glory of uh, institution of can be retained. And apart from all that, what exactly we really want to motivate them or otherwise, what through this rebuilding group, what really we want to achieve it. IEA is a function, functioning as a pioneer steering body for the past century impacting and promoting the Indian engineers across the globe at various international platform. I pledge to take IEA as a revamping measures to promote the significance of IEA among the diverse range of professional geographically, carrying forward the legacy of IEA and execute modernized plans to establish a better community. Membership awareness that drives will be conducted periodically to instill the globe and benefits to, to the members and to build a sound network, build stronger community through a variety of conference, workshop, innovation program, 
and societal advancement activities, establishing platform that inspire the ideal members, female professional towards the spotlight. So now even the conference wise, other corporate societies are very successful organizing the conference. Even in the institution of engineers also organize a conference, but we have to uh, upgrade the level equivalent to other kind of a corporate society to conducting the conference. That way we can attack a number of people as a new members, as well as those who are now till now maybe an act, inactive, we make it as active. And finally, the word is, I'm one of the alumni of this institutions. What really I am now enjoying as a professor and a former head of the department, as well as a chairman of IEEE, that happened because of this institution of engineers. But what, what is the way really I achieve? I expect the same kind of a benefit to be go to the next generation. But that way, this rebuilding group is really very helpful for us to bring in such a level. Again, the institution of India. Wish you all the best for the rebuilding group. And again, request all the audience, please cast the vote in favor of us for electrical, electronics, you know, computer science, not only that, all the branches belong to IAI, uh, particularly the, the rebuilding group people. Please try to vote the rebuilding group people. Cast your vote and make us to revive or otherwise rebuild, rebuild the institution. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Kumarappan, for your beautiful and enlightening speech. I would like to thank you so much for that on behalf of the uh, rebuilding IA team. Now, before we proceed to the question and answer uh, from the various participants, I would request our participants to be ready for posting your questions so that our speakers and panelists uh, should be able to answer your uh, queries coming to that. But prior to that, I would request once again, uh, till the time our participants key in their questions, I would request Dr. Alok, Aloknath Day to sum up the entire, uh, what do you call, meeting which we had today uh, for the benefit of the participants, our stakeholders. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, you have to uh, unmute your mic. Thank you very much. And we have covered a wide range of topics. I think first and foremost is why rebuilding II is needed. And here is a set of people that are committing their time to be able to take this vision forward. We want to reinstate the glory and uh, from electronics, from electrical, from computer science, we are working together and similarly, mechanical, civil, and every department are working. They are also conducting many sessions, but today we are talking about business process automation and particularly how to enhance IEI performance because if we need a strong team to be able to do because it is not about one person's job. Why we are coming as a team, even though many people are going at the individual capacity, that's great. And there are great people, but we need a strong team to be able to work together. So this is one important point that we wanted to communicate to you and ask for your support towards that. Then the next point is there are many of us involved in whether it is IEEE, whether it is INAE, whether it is automation societies, we are professionals. If you can see our hair color and things, you know, with the years of experience, it is our wish for the younger community to be able to benefit more than us benefiting from the process. So I want you to understand that. And this is a glorious institute with a long history. So therefore, we want to bring these changes. And recently, you have seen that the digital platform, how it is coming, you know, any sales, the Amazon, the Flipkart, the way online is going, the education, ed tech, every spheres through the uh, startups, through the bigger companies, digital transformation has become a big thing. Therefore, even if there was nothing else to rebuild, the technology, the infrastructure that is there in the organization today is not sufficient. The outlook, the culture, we in any case need to upgrade to be able to match with the outside world. And we are here 
to bring, whether it is ERP, whether it is SAP, uh, CRM, any aspects of it that is for a governance. And some of us are managing directors, some are in the CTO. So you can understand that we are running different organizations. Samsung, we have 10,000 people in R&D itself. And so similar to each of them in the institutes, in the organization. So we understand what it takes. We need the opportunity. We need to have that financial capability. I think there is a lot of financial resource. The other point we talked about, how the money is being spent, right, wrong, there are priorities of each organization, but the transparency is a must. And we are talking here about how to bring that transparency so that every process is visible. It is not a private fund, it is a public fund, employees as well as you know, the members' money sponsorships from government, other societies. So we need to be accountable, absolutely, and wisely use this money for the benefit of others. If they have another priorities, we should consider that and we are here to take care of that. And the other part is in the student professional upgradations. I mentioned about DigiLocker and the skills. It is very, very vital. We are working, I'm also there, NASCOM's talent um, segment. I am leading that activity to be able to see that. If you go back and search, you will see Future Skills Prime has been launched by METI yesterday, along with NASCOMs and other bodies. So there is this NSDC, there is NSQF, the government has brought in NEP 2020, and there is a framework. So what we are doing in AMIE and many other professional skill set that we are talking. We have to fit to nation's bigger equations. We have to fit to international framework so that you know they keep acknowledging. Otherwise, my degree would not be valid in another country and in the job opportunities. And we have heard you. We, many of you have seen some difficulties in the Middle East areas and others. So here is the intent. And here is the process, here is the skill set that we have, and we want to bring this together to be able to implement into this. So I think we can go on on various topics, but that's the crux of the matter. And this is why we need the business process automations. And with your support, we'll take it forward. Thank you, Iraj. Thank you, Dr. Day. And uh, till the time I have, uh, the volleyball participants close in with more questions, I would request uh, uh, Mr. Ram Chandra Chakraborty to add a few lines to, to, uh, based on today's volleyball webinar. Uh, request you to please unmute your mic. Uh, thank you, Dheeraj. I think uh, we have uh, heard Dr. Dave, who has summed up very nicely everything, and he's a very good speaker. Uh, I, I love to hear him speaking. Uh, Mr. Akhilesh Kumar Jain has given some inputs and um, Dr. Srinivas Singh and Dr. Evan Kumarappan, they have from the respective point of view, they have shared so many things. And I also spoke in my turn something. Uh, so let us all together put our efforts and put IEI uh, to his previous glory and set a path of transparency and integrity and honesty and hard work to build up the institute for the future generations. As you said, my beards are already white, so uh, I have not much hope in that, but I, I, we want to create something for the next generations who will be immensely yes. benefited uh, from this institute of the future. And we have many, many things to do, not only business process automation, we can think of digital <laughs> library, we can think of setting up a link with NPTEL, setting up link with all the global famous Institute like Stanford, MIT, all our Indian homegrown IITs and other things, all the I mean forward-looking institute, and then we can really do a wonderful job, not as a member of the institute, but also as a, we can serve the society, our country, and serve the world at large. Let us do it. Let's all come together, and we need your support. Once again, we request you to support our rebuilding team in all disciplines so that uh, we can represent um, in the council in a greater number and do whatever is best for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for, uh, for the enlightening thing. I have only uh, like very few questions. Many, uh, 
I have got a lot of accolades and praise for you know this IA initiative. But there is one person like uh, he's a question like you know, uh, is this platform a part of IEA? Which I can also answer, but I would request Dr. Anil Kumar to please address this question. Is this platform a part of IEA? Dr. Anil Kumar. Uh, I think he's... Uh, he's muted. Yeah, he has muted, I think. Maybe So uh, no problem. I'll answer on behalf of Dr. Anil Kumar. So this is this particular platform is basically an initiative of the corporate members who are in various whatever engineering divisions, working in various sectors, coming together, uh, taking uh, institution of engineers to a different uh, what you call development, what you call platform. Because why it has came? The reason is that like if the existing uh, management would have done uh, things to up to the mark to, to meet the requirements of the stakeholders. So this platform would not have arised. So the main reason of this platform to arise is basically that uh, the kind of uh, work which is presently going on with the institution of engineers is uh, not up to the expectation of the, our stakeholders, which includes our corporate members, our students, and there was also seen a lot of finan uh, financial, what you call, flaws in many of the systems. So that's why today's webinar of business process automation is mainly themed to bring transparency in the system in terms of uh, what you call interdepartmental inter communication, in terms of inter-process inter communication, and also to have a, a streamlined financial system. I hope I have answered the query of the uh, participant uh, on the platform through which we have come into force. So, so I think there with this, uh, there are no more, no more other questions from the participants. I think they are quite convinced with the today's webinar. So, we, uh, before going to that, I would like to thank one and all our uh, our speakers, our panelists, and 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 the most to our participants, our student members who have came in this particular webinar who have joined this webinar and uh, tried to understand what exactly this rebuilding IEI team is looking up to. And we can assure you that this team, if, if they are brought in power by the corporate members, will definitely try to come up to the expectations of the participants across India, the stakeholders across India who are a part and parcel of Institution of Engineers India. So thank you one and all, thank you so much for attending this webinar and wish you all the best to you. Stay safe, be healthy because this is a COVID situation. Thank you, sir. Dr. Srinivas, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Ram thank Chandra you. Sir, thank you very sir, much. Dr. Thank Dr. you. Thank Nandes, you. Sir, yes. Professor Ann Kumarpan, sir. Sri Akhilesh Kumar Jain, sir. And also Dr. Anil Kumar, sir, for gracing and meeting this, making this event a success. Thank you so much. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thanks. We have a nice weekend. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. Happy holidays. I am ending the today's meeting. Thank you so much, sir. Great.